We got um, 426 here on our uh, St. Louis Men's Group against Cancer Radiothon on KTRS. Thank you guys for listening. Jerry Andriel is with us. Uh, Jerry, good to see you again. Uh, likewise, guy. You know, I always like seeing you. We've done some events other than the Radiothon. We've done some events together and uh, imparted some information, I think, maybe that ha has I helped people. I uh, appreciate all your help in disseminating uh, the good news that we've been developing in the fight against prostate cancer. Sure. So let's talk a little bit about prostate cancer, specifically men. Um, uh, we talked about early detection. That's important. How soon should men start... Uh, you know, not having someone check their prostate, but going to a doctor to do that. <laughs> well, Guy, that's the key thing. It's all about early detection. And so we say for a man who has an average risk of prostate cancer, he should start when he's 50. Now, if he's had high risk for prostate cancer... What does that mean? Does that mean in family? Yeah, either because it's in your family, and, you, and by that we mean you have one or more first-degree relatives who have been diagnosed okay. with prostate cancer. Sure. Or, if the man is African-American, those men ought to start getting tested in their 40s. Really? Okay. So the incidence of prostate cancer is greater in African-American men than it is in Caucasian? The incidence and the aggressiveness of the cancer, really? particularly among urban-dwelling African-American men, is very high. Um, so I know that we've got a group uh, of men that are connected to the St. Louis Men's Group Against Cancer that deal directly with that, which is wonderful. Uh, but it's, I, I always tell, uh, you know, women, it's most important for them to egg on their guy to get this done. And it really is a nothing thing, isn't it? Well, you're right about that. You know, most of our healthcare decisions are made by the women in our lives, whether it's our mother or our wife or whatever along the way. And uh, men are very lackadaisical about uh, going to the doctor. Sure. You know, the examination isn't as bad as uh, most comedians make it out to be. <laughs> yeah. And uh, over and above the examination, you know, we have new tools that are really good. And, and I got to give a shout out to the St. Louis Men's Group Against Cancer because we've been fortunate at Washington University. They have funded our research for at least a decade. Wow. And, and over that decade, we have done a series of uh, investigations, and we've now uh, developed our own uh, Washington University St. Louis Men's Group Against Cancer Risk Calculator. Wow. So a man who's concerned that he might have prostate cancer can go to our webpage. He can put in what he knows about himself, his PSA, his age, a little bit about his family history. But more importantly, if he's had an MRI scan of the prostate, which is really crucial, specific results from that MRI. Puts all that data in there, presses a button, and we read out to him the probability or the chance that he is harboring an aggressive prostate cancer. So let me ask you about this, too, because, um, and I think men just turn a, a blind eye to it sometimes. They're really aren't a lot of symptoms involved, are there? If, if a man waits until he has symptoms, yeah. probably too late in the game to cure him. Wow. We can do a lot for him, yes. but we, often we cannot cure him. And that's why it's all about early detection. You're feeling good, have your PSA test, go visit your doctor, and if either, either the examination or the PSA test is abnormal, get yourself an MRI. Dr. Jerry Andriol is with us from Washington University. Any uh, new movement on uh, uh, prostate cancers? Is there, there is a lot of good things uh -huh. going on, both at the front end and the back end. So, for example, on the front end, let's say you're a youngish man and, you, and your dad and your uncle both had prostate cancer. We now have a genetic test where, sort of like 23andMe, yes. you swab the inside of your cheek. Send that uh, Q-tip, if you would, off to the lab, and it reads out your chance of developing aggressive prostate cancer. In other words, did you inherit the genes that are predisposing you to get prostate cancer? And if, if that you did, what's mm -hmm. your next step? Well, there you go. So instead of waiting until you're 50 or 40, like we've been saying, I don't care, even if you're 30 years old, start getting tested. Okay. And Have is that a yearly exam? Well... Uh, it depends. If, if your PSA is really low, you could probably do that every two to four years. Okay. On the other hand, if your PSA is close to being abnormal, which is over four, or if it's over four, by all means, get it every year. All right, so I'm going to ask you a question that 
it, as we were talking, if somebody had asked me the same question, I wouldn't know how to answer. What is cancer? I mean, you know, because it comes in many different forms, how does it can manifest itself? Can cancer is uncontrolled cellular growth and replication. So every cell in our body is alive. Many of them are dying or just regenerating themselves to maintain their functions. But if things go awry, those cells can replicate uh, uncontrollably. And as they replicate, they become invasive. They eat their way into the small blood vessels that feed every cell in our body. And that's how they can metastasize or spread to distant sites. And so the difference between something being uh, malignant, a tumor being malignant, and one being benign, both being cancerous. Yes. Th well, they're, they're, they're both what we, if I can use the $10 sure. word, you called may. neoplasms. They're sure. new growths. But if they... Uh, uh, show this aggressive invasive behavior, that's when we call them malignant. If they don't show aggressive or invasive behavior under the microscope, then they're characterized generally as benign. Very good. Man, they're, and a they're, good explanation. There are a lot of cancers too. Uh, yeah, uh, sadly you were talking about mm -hmm. uh, the air in your home, uh, maybe sure. radon is, yes. is one thing that people had been aware of. Uh, all of these things likely are the environmental causes of various cancers. Ooh. Interesting. Yeah. Um, when you talk about viruses, you kind of think of uh, something that's invading your body and, and taking over so that the virus can grow and everything. When you explain cancer, it kind of sounds like just something, oops, that happened in your body and it's just, you know, multiplying. Yeah, not, no, they... not, it doesn't have a mind of its own. It's just somebody flipped the wrong switch. And now the wrong cells are growing instead of the right ones. Well, what, some of the things that happen if you're exposed to too much ultraviolet light, that can cause DNA damage. You know, DNA is the genetic molecule. Sure. You damage that, and if it damages in a specific way and realigns in a way that, that some uh, uh, growth-promoting genes are, are close to the improper genes, that can turn the switch on for that cell and it can start replicating uncontrollably and go from there. Now, when we're young, when we're strong, when we're in good shape, by and large, our immune systems knock off all of these uh, cells uh, just in the very early phases and we don't even know about them. But you get old, you're under stress, you're uh, taking medication that suppresses your immune system, or you're constantly exposed to carcinogenesis carcinogenic sure. things, things yes. that cause cancer, it beats your immune system. And then the cancers take root and start growing. Peanut M&Ms? Screw up the DNA? No, they're very okay. good. Especially right. the blue ones. <laughs> Gotta love the blue ones. That's the color of the St. Louis Men's Group Against Cancer. Yeah, it? Well, it's one of them. <laughs> uh, Jerry Andriel uh, from uh, St. Uh, not St. Louis University. Sorry, I, I, they're a great university. Washington University, thank you so much for being with us. It's great to see you again. I really appreciate the opportunity, and I really appreciate the great support of the men's group. It's You'll been always fantastic. have fantastic. Yeah, thanks yeah. again. All I'll right. see you soon, Jerry. Thank thanks, you so everybody. much for being on the show. Thank you. Uh, Four thirty-five. Let's take a look at.